Hi everyone, today I would like to show you how I created all the damaged parky material in Substance Designer. I decided to split the tutorial into two parts. The first part will be height map and the second one will be roughness, base color and normal. In this part I'll show you fundamentals of creating wood texture that can be used for wood flooring, furniture and things like that. I'll show you how to add extra details, which are nuts, different kinds of damages, spots and chipped edges. We'll talk about how to create herringbone pattern for wood planks. And finally we'll combine wood texture with planks to complete our wood flooring. Also, I created another version of Parky with damaged planks. You can control the amount of damage, dirt, the location of damaged planks, color, height and much more. You can download fully completed material from my Gumroad page. You can open the graph, check the values and see how everything is done. Link is in the description down below. So, let's get started. Let's start by creating new substance. For this project, I'm gonna choose the PBR Metallic Roughness template because I plan to use this material in Unreal Engine. There are two options for size mode. Absolute mode is for having a fixed resolution. But if you want to change the resolution anytime without losing the quality, then I have to choose relative to parent option. We are going to start our material with creating a basic wood texture. First thing I would like to do is to hit space and grab any cytrophic noise. I'll use this node for creating wood fibers. Under the size parameters, I'm changing the X and Y amount. Let's hit spacebar and find directional noise 4. This pattern reminds me of wood fibers, that is why I will use it as a base to set a direction for the lines that we've already made. Next, I will use the directional warp node that warps and changes the direction of these lines. Next, I added a warp node with parent noise that gives us a bit more of an organic shape. Directional warp works similar to warp, but warps only in a specific direction. The difference between blur node and blur hq node is that the last one is more precise, but requires more time for computing. That's why we're gonna use blur node for our material. Let's hit the spacebar and add directional noise 1. We'll combine this node with the rest of the texture by using blend node. Now you can see how it adds more details that define the wood. Now I need to level up the values in a graph and make the texture more even. To make it I can use levels node or histogram range node. Since histogram range node allows me to achieve the desired result and takes less time to compute, then I'll use histogram range node. Finally, I'm adding an extra touch with Direction Warp node. The aim is to make lines more broken, sharp and imperfect. You can play with intensity here and adjust different parameters to achieve the desired result. This actually is the base of our wood and what we're gonna do next is to create a nut pattern. I'll start with gradient linear 2 node and set its styling to around 65. This number depends on how much detail you want to have in your nuts. Next, I'll warp the gradient with my parallel noise. You can see how lines have been warped by the pattern that we added before. I'm gonna play with intensity and warp angle here to add more variation to the pattern. Now let's add a transformation node and squeeze a little bit the pattern. Next, I'll add a levels node. By adjusting levels, we darken the areas we don't need and leave only the nuts that will appear on our wood. I'll hit spacebar and grab edge detect node. 
This node creates contrast and helps us to emphasize the lines. Now we have to mask unnecessary parts again by using Perlin Noise as a mask and white color as an overlay. The next step is to change the direction of these lines and make them more organic looking. To achieve that, I'll warp the knots with the wood texture that we created before. Now we need to add a little bit of a blur. I'm trying to choose between blur and directional blur, but I think that in this case directional blur works better. Finally, let's blend our notes with the basic wood texture. Set it to multiply and adjust opacity. The next thing that we are going to do is spots that can definitely appear on damaged old wood. I think spots are nice details to have, it adds an extra touch and some kind of story behind the wood. Let's start with the Grunge map. You can go to the Noises panel and choose the right node that will be perfect for you. I decided to pick Grunge 11 because we can create nice spots from it. I'm gonna adjust the properties a little bit and check the Invert option. Let's blur the spots. We are going to use slow blur grayscale node. The grunge map is our input and fractal sum base is a slope map. Make sure to use the right version of the node for our input. You want to use slow blur for color inputs or slow blur grayscale for grayscale inputs. As the final step, I'm going to use levels to mask unnecessary parts. So basically that's it, it's pretty easy and fast. Now let's combine spots with the wood texture by using blend node and setting it to the subtract mode. The next important detail is to have a cracks and chipped wood. We are making an old worn wood material, that's why I think these details can fit in here. I'll start with the shape node. I'm trying to create a pattern that remains wood chips. Let's set the tile generator node and under the pattern menu select image input. Tile generator node allows us to multiply the amount of wood chips and have a control over how many of them we have, its size, scale and variation. The main thing to do is to add some randomness to the pattern, to make it look more organic. I'm going to change the pattern to waves, as it remains base wood texture. Under the pattern specific section you can choose how detailed your base wood will be. Now we have to make the chips more jagged. For that I'll use our wood base texture that we did before, rotate it with transformation node and plug into directional warp. You can see how chips are being worn by wood texture that we added. Next I'll add a little bit of a blur and level snow to define the shape. Let's squeeze it a bit and rotate. I 
I think that we need to add some randomness to the shape, so let's use Grunge Map 3. I often use a combination of blurring levels to define the shape and remove unnecessary small details that add extra noise that we don't need here. I'm gonna squeeze and rotate the pattern and blend it with the chips that we created before. Let's grab base wood texture and scale down it a bit by hitting divide by 2 option under stretch section. I added levels to both nodes to lighten them a bit and blend them using blend node. Now we are finally ready to make wood planks. For this perky material I decided to make a herringbone pattern. It's pretty simple, first of all I'm going to grab a weave generator node. This node generates a simple weave, which we will use as a base. I played with this node and figure out the values of the parameters that work best for me. Feel free to experiment with this node and try different options here, you definitely can get some interesting results. The next thing I'm going to do is to grab Levels node and plug it into the height output of the weave generator. I want to increase the contrast and get rid of the blurry gap between stitches. Now I would like to add a little bit of roundness to planks, I'll use Edge Detect node for that. Let's take a look at what is going on in our 3D view. There is a setup that we have to do. I'm going to take this edge detect and drag it into this normal conversion node that goes into the normal output. Let's add a little bit of variation to the pattern. I will grab Perlin Noise and Warp Nodes, Scale Perlin Noise and adjust Warp Intensity. Next thing I would like to do is to add some damage and imperfections to the planks. I'll use Perlin Noise again and Slow Blur Grayscale node to make the edges a bit tilted and sloped. Now I would like to add slope not only to the edges, but to the whole shape of each plank. I'm going to grab flat fill node and drag it to flat fill into random color node to generate a vector map that we will use in the vector warp input.
Now connect this node with a vector warp grayscale node and set its intensity to zero. Next, duplicate the vector warp node by pressing Ctrl D and connect it with the flood fill node, which we already have. The second vector warp node we will use a little bit later. Let's blend everything that we created before. Hit spacebar and find blend node. I'll use vector warp as a mask, slope blur grayscale is a foreground and warp is a background. By doing this, we randomize the slope intensity of edges on each plank using the values from the first vector warp node. The next step is to add some damage to the edges. I'll make it with the help of slow blur, crystal 2 node and warp that we made before. Let's blend these damaged edges with our planes. For that, I'll use the first vector warp node that we made before as a mask. I'll plug blend node into the normal output to take a look at what is going on in our 3D view. I'll use blur to make damage on edges less intense. Now let's add a slight slope to the planks. I'll add another blend node to add variation to Plank's height and to make the damage less intense. Finally, we are ready to combine all the details that we made and finish our wood texture. Let's grab this version of Cracks and invert its values with Invert Grayscale node. Next, we are going to blend our wood texture with Cracks and use these inverted Cracks as a mask. Now it's time to blend the wood texture with our planks. We need two variations of the texture. The first one is the horizontal direction of texture and the second one is the vertical direction. I'll use transformation node to rotate wood texture. 
The next step is to use the directional warp node to offset the pattern and to make it less uniform. Let's find weave generator node that we made before. We are going to use its outputs mask 1 uh, to mask horizontal planks and output that is called mask 2 to mask vertical planks. Plug into the blend node our horizontal wood pattern and mask 1. The next thing to do is to plug into the next blend node our vertical wood pattern and mask 2. Now we have to blend our vertical and horizontal planks. Let's use histogram range to make values more even and less intense. Our wood texture is almost done. The last thing we have to do is to add a gap between planks. So that's it, we finished the first part of our Berkey material. You can come back to some nodes and play with these parameters a little bit more. Maybe you want to add more chipped edges or increase the intensity of damages, or maybe to change the shape or size of nuts. It's up to you. Please let me know if you have any questions and comments down below. You can download a fully completed material from my Gumroad page. You can open the graph, check the values and see how everything is done. If you like this video, please hit the like button. In the next part of this tutorial, I'll be covering how to create base color, roughness and normal map for this material. So make sure to subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.